Welcome back to EduChat with Dr. Sujit. Now we are in the 16th episode of EduChat and I'm sure you are loving all the answers that I give and they are helping you to grow your practice to the next level. And you know, I'm so happy that I get so many questions every week that it becomes very difficult for us to select the top three questions of the week. But you have to do it and the entire selection process is based upon how you know how much that question and that answer can benefit to a wider audience majority of the dentists or as many dentists as possible in their practices that's the only criteria i apply simply because every answer i give you should benefit majority of the dentists or you know as many of our colleagues as possible so in this episode episode number 16th of edu chat with dr sujit I'm going to answer the top three questions once again. And today, the voice of the question behind camera is Rutuja. Okay, so she's going to ask the questions. So let's begin the episode 16 of EduChat with Dr. Sujit. So Rutuja, what's the first question? So Dr. Naveen is asking how to manage a consult doctor for the treatment of the patient who pays different amount for the same treatment. Well, Dr. Naveen, a good question. If you have more than two consultants of the same fraternity visiting your practice, this problem may arise. Okay, that for example, if you have two endodontists consulting your practice or maybe two orthodontists and interestingly, both of them charges differently or the charges are not same. And the worst problem comes when they do the patient consultation and maybe, for example, one endodontist say, for example, 3,000 rupees for the root canal, another one says 4,000 or 2,500, whatever, and then you are in a problem. Sometimes it so happens that the same patient gets one root canal done from one consultant and another root canal gets, you know, is done by another consultant and the patient end up asking you because you are the showstopper. You are the runner of the practice. So it's like you, it, it becomes very problematic. And I understand as a practicing dentist that, you know, you are absolute speechless what kind of answer you should give to the patient. Isn't it? So the solution is very simple. No matter how many consultant endodontists or orthodontists or, you know, no matter how many consultants you have, my very frank and genuine advice is you should be the one who should talk about money to the patient. Remember this. So even if you want your patient to be consulted by an orthodontist or an endodontist, maybe for a prognosis, whether, you know, the tooth will be saved or not, or maybe for, uh, you know, whether it's a foreplay extraction or a non-extraction case, whatever. So because those experts, those consultants are experts in this, their particular field, make sure that you, they do the consultation. It doesn't matter at all. But then when it comes to explaining the treatment, when it comes to explaining the treatment charges, when it comes to explaining the number of appointments or the treatment duration is required, you should take charge so that you can maintain the uniformity of the charges. And that makes your practice more authentic more transparent and people will be happy and this type of problem will never arise. Now, there can be a, you know, problem B or another problem when you have two consultants and their charges are different. Like for example, somebody asks X amount and somebody asks 1.5 X amount for the same root canal they do in your practice. Now, in that particular case, you just have to have a conversation with your consultants about what is your treatment charges, what is the fees that you take from the patient and what's the best possible you can give to that consultant. Okay, so if they are of the same domain skill, same talent, then what you give them should be almost the same. So it should not be necessary that, it's not necessary that it should be exactly the same, but then, you know, more or less the charges should be the same. And if there is hardly any difference, maybe less than two, three, four percent, then it is absolutely okay. If your consultant is good, okay, if that endodontist, that orthodontist or whosoever visits oral surgeon, if they are good, it is absolutely okay that, you know, that charges may not be exactly the same, okay? But one thing that must be remembered is if you do the patient consultation, if you convey the treatment charges and irrespective of what your consultant 
takes away from you. You ensure that your charges for the patients are same. That will maintain the uniformity. That will maintain the transparency of your practice. And ultimately the brand image of your practice in the eyes of not just your patients, but even your prospects. So I hope you got the answer. And uh, this is a very useful answer for a lot of dental practitioners, right? So let's move to the question two. So, Rutuja, what's the next question? Dr. Anujit Asi, what are the all things considered to shifting from two tire city to tire one city? Is it a good decision to shift the clinic? Okay, so Dr. Anuj, shifting from tier two city to tier one, let me tell you, uh, not just about tier one or tier two, whatever, but shifting your practice from one place to another is always very difficult, very challenging. So I don't know the reason for which you are, you know, willing to shift. There can be different reasons. Okay. But let me tell you something. I have someone who has practiced in my small town for more than, you know, not more than almost two decades, 18 and a half years of practice. And then I shifted to Pune. Even if you are Dr. Sujit Pardeshi, who is expert in practice growth, trust me, it is not easy to shift the practice and to grow the practice. Of course, I had that advantage because I was talking on this subject for almost a decade now. So I could click it very fast. But still, it took me around 16 to 18 months to take this practice to an absolute dream level. So it's not easy. That's the first point. The second thing, see, if the motto of shifting or if the reason behind shifting from one place to other is because your practice is not running well in one place and that's why you are planning to shift to some other city or other, you know, whatever. The problem is it may not click there as well. Remember, it's never about the place. It's never about the field. It's never about the practice. It's always about you. If someone who do not know how to build a successful dental practice in one place, it's always going to be very difficult as well as challenging for the same person, even if he shifts to the another place, right? I hope you're getting my point. Because you need to work on yourself more than your practice in order to be a successful practitioner, right? Now, shifting to tier one city or any metro or cosmo city in India, let me tell you a few, not disadvantages, but few challenging points. Number one, the waiting period will be longer, okay? There are thousands of dentists in every metro city in India. So you will have to have that patience because the practice is not going to be a cakewalk right from the moment go. Okay. It will take months and years to build that successful or dream dental practice there. That's number one. Second, when it comes to metro cities, you need to ensure that you know digital marketing very well. Or at least you have someone who can do it for you properly. Because in the bigger cities, it's all about online. So that doesn't mean that people in smaller places are not on Facebook and WhatsApp. They are there everywhere. But the point is, it is too online dependent when it comes to bigger places. Because people do not get even a parking space, they use Ola and Uber. That doesn't happen in smaller places. Right? Because people just don't have time to find out any good restaurant or, you know, when they go to vacation or whatever, they just search it on Google or online. So if you ship to a bigger place, your online presence, your online knowledge, your digital marketing of your practice will have to be of a very good quality. Because unless you are able to do that, you will have to struggle even more. Because word of mouth will take its own time to spread. In order to ensure that people come to you from word of mouth, you will have to do few patients successfully, which are happy and satisfied with your treatment so that they can go out. But the problem is from where you are going to get those first 100, 200, 500 patients from who are going to spread the word of mouth. So socializing and networking also is very difficult in the bigger places. It's not very easy, right? So there are multiple challenges and the third bigger challenge will be the overheads will be way higher as compared to tier two or a smaller place. Okay. Just to give you an example, my electricity bill, okay, in Pune is around seven times than what it was in my small place, 
right? And this was just an example. So forget about the rents and the real estate prices and all. I hope you are getting the point. So if the reason is this, that, you know, the practice is not functioning well in place A, and that's why you're going to shift to place B, work on yourself. I always say it, dentistry is about 3M, marketing, soft skills, and clinical skills. So normally, clinical skills is never a problem. Almost all of us are good at clinical skills, right? Marketing can always be outsourced. You need to learn the art and science of practice management and practice growth, irrespective of where you practice, okay? If the reason is this, that you want a better lifestyle, so let me tell you, you in order to have a better lifestyle, you will need a lot of money, okay? In order to have that money, your practice should work well or click well in the bigger place. And in order to make it happen, you will still have to work on yourself and your practice, right? So for whatever reason you are shifting, remember this, you will need a lot of money, okay? When I say a lot of money, it doesn't mean that you need crores of rupees to set up a dental practice. But the point is, even if your practice does not click maybe for six months, a year, two years, three years, you need to have that financial bandwidth where your savings will be able to meet your expenses and liabilities for the first couple of years at least. Because your household expenses will be higher, your overheads in your clinic will be higher, your lifestyle expenses will be higher, okay? So you should have that much financial bandwidth to ensure that it happens. So for whatever reason you're shifting, ultimately it comes down to a few things. Number one, you, your mindset and how well you are, not just with clinical skills, but soft skills as well. Number two, if you have that patience and if you are ready for that challenge, that even if it takes two years, three years or four years for your practice to click, you're still okay with it. And if you have that financial bandwidth. So take into consideration of all this, work on your numbers. And if your numbers are comfortable, just go ahead and do it. Okay. Success is a journey that begins outside the comfort zone. There's absolutely no harm in going out of your comfort zone because trust me, it's always those who do it are successful than otherwise. All the best to you. So let's move to the third question. So Rutuja, what's the third question? Dr. Pradeep is asking how to manage an emergency case in dental clinic. Okay, managing dental emergencies, right? So Dr. Pradeep, there are two aspects to it. Number one, which is related to your domain skill or clinical skills. So no matter what kind of medical emergency or dental emergency we get in our practice, you need to have that domain expertise that you manage at least the basics so that if there is, you know, a severe dental emergency where patient needs hospitalization, okay, you need to at least have the expertise where, you know, you can just give that first aid and shift the patient to hospital, right? If the emergency is of any smaller, uh, you know, magnitude or quantum where it's like just a synco or maybe you have just done the perforation, whatever, okay? You need to have the domain expertise that you can manage it well. So when it comes to managing dental emergencies or medical emergencies in dental practice, there are two aspects, as I said. First is related to your clinical skills or domain skills. If you have it, great. If you do not have it, because unfortunately, we all as dentists are never been trained a lot in handling medical emergencies during our dental schools. Right? So if you don't know it, it's better to learn it rather than thinking that you can handle it. Okay? Don't assume things. It's an absolute pure science. Okay? If you don't know how to handle the medical emergency, just go do some course, attend some conferences, lectures, whatever you want. Read a few books, but become expert as far as the clinical skills are concerned in handling those emergencies. And the second part is managing the patient and patient's relatives when there is an emergency. Because I'll tell you what, it's never the emergency that causes the problem majority of the times, unless it's fatal or very serious, okay? But how you manage patient, how you convey the message to the patient, your communication, the way you present it, the way you manage things makes the difference. I'll give you a very small example, my own experience. You know, when I was practicing in my small town, one of the patient had very, you know, severe reaction to diclofenac, okay, that I prescribed. 
and I got the phone call after like four to six hours immediately. Like I did the extraction in the afternoon. I got the phone call in the evening, and uh, the patient's uh, wife was there, and then she said that you know all the symptoms typical, any allergic rashes, but to a high greater extent. And I just told that patient that wait for a couple of minutes. I just consult a physician. Okay, I'll talk to the physician and I'll get back to you. So within the couple of minutes, I talked to one of my physician friends in my town, and I told him that you know we are not expert in managing this. Okay, if that would have been a mild rash or something, we could have given any you know antihistaminic to the patient. But then it is something which is not mild. So I'm going to refer that patient to you. So you manage the patient, and uh, if there is anything which you need from my side, just let me know. I called back the patient's wife and I told her that you go to Doctor X Y Z, and uh, he will take care of the patient. So the pa they went there. He you know admitted the patient. He took care. In the evening, I called him if the patient is settled. The patient was stable, settled, and then I visited the patient in the hospital. And the problem was solved. It was not about money. It was not about uh, you know any kind of uh, miscommunication, misunderstanding, and most importantly, it was not about the panic which you can get if you have or if you land up in some kind of you know this kind of circumstances. The point which I want to make here, I hope you got the point. How well you handle it, okay, that's one aspect, and how well you handle it clinically, that's another aspect. So, in order to handle, you know, any kind of medical emergencies, you need to have the expertise in both of them. Again, they come back to soft skills as well as clinical skills, right? So, a very good question. I like to answer in this, and and I'm sure that you know a whole majority of people who watch this video will get benefited from it. And that's why, if you are watching this video, I want you to share this with at least two, three, five of your friends, because you never know. You know who is going to shift from tier one to tier two to tier one city? Who is going to get the medical emergency, or who is going to have two consultants asking for two different charges for the same treatment from the same patients? Right? I hope you enjoyed this episode of Edu Chat with Doctor Sujit. So before we come to the end of the episode sixteen, we need to select the best question. And in my opinion, the best question was the second question. Okay, that. Uh, uh, it, it was about shifting from tier 1 to, you know, tier 2 to tier 1 city. So, uh, this was the best question of the week. So, Dr. Anuj, congratulations. You have won the copy of my international bestseller book, New Age Dental Premier, absolutely free of cost. So, just hit an email to connect at sunitpardeshi.com and we'll be very glad to send you, you know, a personally autographed copy to you. So, with this, we come to the end of the 16th episode of Edu Chat with Dr. Sujit. Keep on asking questions. Keep on enjoying this. Share it with your friends and colleagues. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the like button. Put your comments. Keep on asking questions and I'll be glad to answer them. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.